Hello, Kathy Daw. Nice to have you join me. A big congratulations to you for earning your first incentive trip. I'm so excited. I will be joining you in Maui as well. So lots of uh, great news. So uh, look forward to that. And trust me, now that you've earned one, um, you're going to want to earn all of the trips, Kathy, because they are fabulous. Um, you will see that Stampin' Up! spoils us with products and pillow gifts and um, entertainment, all kinds of great things. So you're going to love it. Hi, Lisa. Good morning to wherever you are. I don't remember where you live, Lisa. I'm in Ohio, so it is just afternoon. Okay, I'm just going to wait about 30 seconds or so and see if we can get a few more people to jump on. Lisa and Kathy, if you would be so kind as to share, uh, click the share button. Um, perhaps we'll get some more people on that way. Oh, Wisconsin. Okay, I was thinking you were in the Midwest, Lisa. Good to know. I always enjoy knowing where everybody is watching from. Hi, Chrissy. You must be on lunch break. We're going to wait just a few more seconds. I have to be um, very mindful of my time today. Hi, Eleanor. I have um, one of my visiting angel clients to see at 1.30, so I'll need to jump off and quickly change and head over to see her for the afternoon. Lisa, thanks for sharing. If the rest of you would click the share button, I would appreciate it so much. It helps me out greatly. Okay. So um, I had lots of things planned for today, but it's uh, a different kind of Thursday for me. Usually Thursday is dedicated all to Stampin' Up, but I have to see a client this afternoon. I'm getting ready to go to a wedding tomorrow um, that my daughter is in, in Cincinnati. Um, had a doctor's appointment, blah, blah, blah. Anyways, just have to be real mindful of my time. So. I had um, several projects planned, all of them being Halloween treats or treat favors, you might call them. But I will do at least two of them and then we'll I'll see where um, I am as far as time and see what else I can do. If not, you might get an extra Facebook Live in the next couple of days, um, perhaps Sunday. Um, but let's just go ahead and get started so today i'm featuring the designer series paper monster mash now i've used a good bit of this so i don't know that i have all the patterns to show you but let me pull that one out nope that's not the one um anyways i have several patterns to show you this has fun little um jars of poison and creepy creepy specimens. Um, here's some fun Halloween characters and the tree and the haunted house. Haunted houses at night with the moonlight. Oh, I should be showing you the back. This is fun. It's kind of a maze. Uh, makes me think of that game. Is it Clue? Is that the name of it? Clue? This one has spider webs on the back. Very fun. This has a fun um, pattern in, I believe that's crushed curry and vanilla. So this is a pattern you could use many times throughout the year. Okay. Um, we have these, um, the books from perhaps a haunted house or haunted library. And then like a newsprint on the back and it's got different, um, spooky recipes and stories, etc. Chrissy, I'm glad you dropped in to say hi, and please do watch the uh, replay later. You're gonna love it. Okay, this has different frames of um, framed pictures of spooky characters, and again, some newsprint and um, highlights there. Lots of baths. Here is another pattern that you could use throughout the year, just like that one I showed you earlier. I've seen several people using this pattern 
with either cherry cobbler or real red and doing holiday cards, Christmas cards, okay? But it could be used for so many different things. Um, and the others, I think I've shown you, yes. Okay, so in a nutshell, that is the Monster Bash Designer Series paper. Okay, and the first thing, the first project I want to show you, hi Tammy, is the um, candy bar slider, okay? And I'm using the Hershey bars that come in the six pack, okay? You buy at the grocery store or Walmart or wherever, um, just the standard size Hershey bars that you buy in the six pack, okay? Which are usually on sale a lot with Halloween and uh, some mores for fall, things like that. And they're just cute little fun ways to give a quick and easy inexpensive treat. So let me show you how to make that. You do want to have your candy bars on hand when you make this, okay? It just makes life much, much easier if you have the candy bars on hand. Um, the other thing I will tell you is I have done the very same thing, um, the same slider idea with packets of popcorn, which is also um, something fun to do and would be a great fall treat as well, okay? And before you do this, I'm going to tell you that I'm starting with a five and a half inch square of cardstock. You can do it with just designer series paper or just cardstock. I like the layering myself, okay? So anyways, this is five and a half by five and a half. And as you can see, I'm just kind of rolling it with my fingers a little bit. That helps to break up some of the fibers and make it more pliable to work with, okay? Now, the key is, go ahead, you're gonna wrap this around your candy bar. The key is, do not, do not adhere the cardstock to the candy bar. You want the cardstock to be adhered to itself only. And typically when I am making um, 3D projects, treat favors, I like to use the um, tear and tape from Stampin' Up, okay? It's just a little bit stronger than our snail, so I think it's worth it. It's very economical. One roll, I believe, is $7, and it, it will last you quite a while, okay? Oh, I actually should have put this on the other side, but that's all right. Let's do it this way. I'm just going to turn it around. You really only need it on one side. Um, the other thing I want to tell you is instead of sealing it in the center of the bar, seal it towards one of the edges, okay? And I will show you why in a second. Actually, let me do it this way. I put the tape on the opposite place that I really wanted it, okay? So here's my candy bar, and I'm gonna wrap it around so that it overlaps and the edge is near the top edge of the candy bar, okay? And shortly you will understand why I'm telling you to put it, put that seam near the top instead of the middle. Top or bottom, but just not in the middle, okay? And you want it to fit snug. You can see that snug, but I'm still able to pull it, okay? Um, there we go. Okay, now my designer series paper measures five and a quarter inches by five and a half. And the reason I went five and a quarter is I just like that um, that bit of cardstock showing on each end, kind of to frame that paper, okay? Eleanor, you'll love this paper. It's just super fun, super fun. Okay, and again, I'm going to use, let's see, I have to think about the skin. Again, I'm going to use the tear and tape, okay? And I'm gonna put a little bit here because um, 
I do want this to hold to the cardstock. You don't need a lot of adhesive, but just to hold that cardstock in place, okay? And again, we're shooting for um, our seam to be near the top of the candy bar, okay? So I'm gonna adhere it like that. I'm gonna pull, oops, I just realized you aren't seeing my whole picture, sorry about that. Okay, if you missed anything and I need to reshow it, let me know, but I think we're okay now. Okay, so again, I have my seam near the edge of the candy bar, not in the center, okay? And you can see it fits snugly, but loose enough to pull out. The reason I wrapped the um, cardstock first and then wrapped the designer series paper instead of layering them and adhering them and then doing it is the designer series paper, once you adhere it in place at the top and the bottom to the cardstock, when you wrap it, um, they don't necessarily wrap together. You might have a gap between the two papers. So that's why I did them separately, okay? Now I'm going to pull out my candy bar. And so I've got my tube, my slider tube. I'm going to use some of this, um, what is this called? The black gl glittered organdy ribbon, okay? And it's so pretty and so fun, okay? And you don't really need to measure it. Just um, wrap it around your candy bar lengthwise. Okay. And just cut it off. I don't even know what that is. 16 inches or so. 18. Um, looks like I have about 18, 19 inches. Okay. But now that will vary. Obviously, all of your measurements will vary, say, if you do the... Um, popcorn packets instead, or I found a couple of these in the um, on clearance at Kroger's. Um, I could make a slider with this, and obviously the measurements would be different. So I'm just giving you the measurements for the Hershey bar. So just be aware of that. Another great ribbon, well, we've got several things. I just coordinate to whatever paper I'm using. The black satin ribbon is great this um, black scallop edge ribbon, which is part of the Monster Bash product suite in the holiday catalog. But this is all I have left because I've been using that. Okay, so now I want to use my half inch circle punch and I'm going to punch a hole in the top of the slider and I'm going to punch a hole in the bottom of the slider. And this is the reason why I wanted you to put your seams at, at the top edge. If we had them right down the center, and I made this mistake when I, um, not when I made my samples, but when I was demonstrating at our team meeting last week. If you put the seam in the center, it's very difficult to punch your hole, okay? But if the seams are at the top, you're still only uh, punching through the two layers, which is easily done with the Stampin' Up! punches, okay? Then you're gonna take that candy bar with the ribbon wrapped around it, and you're gonna slide it back in to your slider and go down a little bit just so that you have easy access to those holes, and you're gonna pull that top ribbon end through the top of the slider and the back ribbon end through the back side of the slider. Okay, and then pull it back up so the bottom of the candy bar comes through the bottom of the slider. Okay, here's what it looks like from the other side. And I've got this. And now I'm just going to take a piece of this and this is all I have. I'm going to try and use up some of this. I'm sure I don't need that much. I'm going to cut it in half. Okay. And I'm going to tie those two ends of the glittered organdy ribbon together. Now you could even tie on 
um, a little sentiment like this would be cute the happy Halloween punch a hole and tie it in there but I'm going to finish mine off a little differently than that I should go back and show you how how I finished off the other two because they have got several different ways I've done this okay so that's what it looks like now Okay, on this one with the spooky books or haunted stories, um, I did a little um, banner tab behind it. And then I stamped Happy Halloween from the To Every Season stamp set, punched it with a scallop circle, one and three eighths inch scallop circle, and then um, punched a one and a half inch pumpkin pie circle. On this one, um, I just cut out, fussy cut one of the pumpkin heads, jack-o'-lantern heads from the designer series paper, okay? On this one, I want to stamp no tricks or just treats, no tricks, just treats. Um, and this is from the Everything Festive stamp set. This is one of my all-time favorite single stamp sets in the holiday catalog and you can probably guess the reason why. It covers so many different occasions and holidays, okay? Even this one, From Our horn, Home to Yours, you can ignore these little um, snowflakes. You could put flower embellishments on top of them or sequins, whatever. It doesn't have to be just for winter, okay? But just a fun, all year long set of sentiments okay I pre because of time I did um, die cut the large stitched oval die from pumpkin pie and I'm going to stamp my sentiment with the tuxedo black memento ink okay yeah, I'm going to put it on just like that. Okay. And then I can pop it up on dimensionals right there in the center. Okay. On something this size, I like to use two or three dimensionals. They hold well. Um, the adhesive on them is very good, but this way, if I've got two or three, they're, it's not moving and bouncing around too much, okay? Whoops. Okay, there you go, just like that. Now, I might want to take my Wink of Stella and add a little shimmer to these bats. I'm also going to add some shimmer to the spider right here and the spider's web. And it's super easy to do because of the fine tip. Okay, it's like it's like a, a fine paintbrush. Okay, it's got a fine tip. And it doesn't have to be exact either. Okay. If you don't have Wink of Stella, you are missing out. You are missing out. I love this Wink of Stella. Okay, I'm not sure how well you can see the shimmer of that, but definitely in person you can. Okay, so that is your Hershey bar slider, your candy bar slider. Okay, and I'm sure you can make sliders in addition to the Hershey bar with pumpkin, or not pumpkin, um, Popcorn packets, gum packets. I'm sure there are lots of other things out there. So let's set this aside for now. I'll bring these other two down as well. Okay. And now I'm going to show you, let me move the ink out of the way here, a fun, 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 um, and very inexpensive and very easy to make um, treat favor with Hershey Kisses in it, okay? And it's a, just a little tri-fold Hershey Kiss holder, 
Okay, so let me show you how to do that. Um, I don't know what happened to my little piece of DSP I had out, but that's okay. I'll pick a different one. Hold on, let me grab this. one okay let's do this one here we go okay so you want to start with a piece of designer series paper that is four inches square okay just want to check my measurements four inches square then you want to decide do you want to use the top or the bottom, okay? Um, I think I'm gonna use, I shouldn't say top or bottom, front or back side, right? Hi, Verna, nice to have you join us. Where are you from, Verna? Where are you watching from? Okay, so what you're gonna do is you are going to score, I'm gonna double check this measurement, make sure I have it correct. Yes, you're gonna score at one and a quarter inches two and a half inches, and three and three quarter inches, okay? Did I do that correctly? They should, and if I've done that correctly, all three of my panels should be the same size with one tiny one, yes, perfect, okay. Oh, and if you didn't hear the Florence, South Carolina, nice to have you, Verna. Verna, is that anywhere near Simpsonville, South Carolina? I have a cousin that lives in Simpsonville, and she's a big Clemson fan. Okay, so you definitely want to use your bone folder on this, okay? Now, to make this, the large wide flap is going to be your bottom, okay? And I want you to put and you could use snail, whatever. Again, I think um, the tear and tape would be my choice of adhesive or is my choice of adhesive for this project, but any good strong adhesive. Okay, so you're gonna put some on that little flap and just kind of, you know, fold it and have it pictured how it's going to look, okay? So the little flap and the large end flap are going to be the bottom, okay? Then I also want you to put in the middle, or about the middle, of that large end flap, another strip, okay? Peel that one off first, and then if you use a four by four square, and this is easy to remember, four by four square uses, um, will hold like four Hershey Kisses, okay? And just kind of put them in the middle there. The little room to catch that other edge, okay? And they fit easily, so you don't have to worry about spacing them and all that nonsense, okay? When you're making treat favors, you are typically making several at a time, maybe maybe several dozen even, um, if you're doing it for um, class or team or a bunch of coworkers, neighborhood kids. So when you're making treat favors, my personal opinion is you should be able to make them inexpensively and fairly quickly because typically you are making many, many at a time, okay? So now you're just going to tuck that small edge with the adhesive on. on and you're gonna go on top of that other, um, that opposite edge, okay? So it looks like that now, okay? And then you simply um, decorate a little bit, 
Now what I've chosen to do, and I think I'm gonna do the same thing on these, is I used the Boo, where is it? Here it is, the Boo from the Two Every Season stamp set. This um, Happy Halloween would be another good one to use. In fact, I'll use that this time. And then I also used the Bitty Bat Punch from the Every Season Punch Pack, okay? This is a packet of four Bitty Punches for $23 that coordinate with the Two Every, the uh, two every Season stamp set. And they can be purchased in a bundle. Um, I don't remember what the bundle price is, but 23 and 17 is $50, so it must be 45 because the bundles are typically 10% off the two products, okay? Um, I am going to use that Happy Halloween, though, I think. I'll change this one up a little bit. Okay. And I will need that, whoops, this punch. And the one and a half inch circle punch. Okay, let me grab a piece of very vanilla cardstock. Again, I'll be using the black Memento ink. Let's stamp that. And I'm going to punch it. with the one and three eighths inch scallop circle punch. Okay. And I'm actually going to layer that onto a one and a half inch black circle. Okay. Let me move my punches out of the way here. Are you one of those people who cleans up as you go, or do you tend to just push everything aside and um, and then you have a mess to clean up when you're finished? Or maybe you don't even clean up right away. You let it go for days and days and more and more projects. I'd like to think I'm the person that cleans up as I go along. Unfortunately, most days I'm under a lot of um, time restraints and um, typically don't do that. So I need to focus on being a little bit better about that. Okay, I think I'm gonna pop this layer up on dimensionals. And then when I adhere the layers to the favor, I'm going to use snail for that. Hi, Amy Go. If you're jumping on late, I'm so glad you're here, but I'm sorry that you've missed parts already. So you'll definitely want to go back and um, definitely want to go back. Let me do it this way this time. Um, you'll definitely want to go back and catch the replay so that you see all the wonderful things I did today. <laughs> Pat, I love that answer. Clean up? <laughs> Whoever gets to do that. I know, we're too busy stamping and crafting and creating, right? Okay, um, I think these mini dimensionals will work for my bats. They're a wee bit big, but I think I can get away with it. So I'm just going to put some bats on. Can I, I'm trying to hold, do this in a way that you can see what I'm doing. It's a little bit hard with the trifold. I know, Amy, you are one of my Halloween peeps, I'll call you. Okay. And of course, you could put more bats on. You could even stamp your bats and cut them out. The punch will cut this one, okay? I believe that, yes, I believe each of the punches punches out one of the stamps in the set. Okay, so you know that. I am so ready to decorate for Halloween, especially my outside. It's driving me nuts that I don't have my porch decorated and 
I had an appointment this morning that took a little bit longer, and then I was supposed to have another appointment at 11. So I had everything planned out, and then that got canceled. So I made a quick trip to the store, and you know how it goes, right? Okay, so there's that one, okay? Um, another thing I thought of, another way to use these, this one, the bats don't show up quite as well. Okay, but there's some options for, for that as well. I hope you can see them this way. And I'll bring these back in so you can see what we made. I am going to have to stop um, and I won't be able to show you. Um, I had at least two more treat favors I wanted to show you. I'm going to try to get those in on Sunday night. I know last week I had to cancel both of my Facebook Lives. So um, let's plan on Sunday at 7 p.m. Um, as of right now, I don't have anything going on, but you know how my life is. It's always subject to change. Um, let's plan on 7 p.m. on Sunday. Um, and I'm not sure if it'll be here on Stampin' Peace or the Stampin' Scrap page. Oh, well, let's just make it easy and say right back here on the Stampin' Peace VIP group. Invite your friends, please. I would love to get more followers on my VIP group. And I've got some more fun treat projects for Halloween to show you. And of course, any of these can um, work for other holidays as well. We have lots of beautiful um, Christmas designer series papers right now. Um, we have a beautiful fall paper. We have wonderful designer series papers in our annual catalog as well. So you can use them for any occasion. Um, but let me go back to what I was saying. For these, um, I thought this would be cute for like setting your Thanksgiving table or your, you know, Christmas Eve brunch or Christmas Day brunch, Christmas Eve meal, um, and use them as place favors. So you might... Um, Put a label or banner on with somebody's name okay or you can have a long banner and write you know I'm thankful for Amy who crafts so beautifully or I'm thankful for your kindness whatever but I thought it would just be really cute for um, table favors and very quick and easy to make if you have a crowd okay perhaps even a bridal shower or um, a bridal brunch, something like that. I guess I have wedding on the brain because I have to go to this wedding tomorrow. And uh, my daughter Emily is the um, maid of honor in it. So, but wouldn't that be cute? Have a Halloween party or fix a Halloween um, table for your family and have one of these for each of them with their names on, okay? And of course, these would be fun to give out to your special um, trick-or-treaters or your grandchildren or your own children, co-workers. Anybody would re love to receive um, a cute candy bar slider as well. Okay, ladies, that's it for today. I promise I will be back on Sunday at 7 with more treat favors for you. And I look forward to seeing all of you and many more people. So please invite your friends and share this uh, a Facebook group, and I would love for more people to join me. Thanks for spending part of your Thursday with me. I appreciate you all. Make time to do some crafting or some other fun activity for yourself. Have a great weekend.